Angelique. Um, I'm a painter. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I've been here for about uh, a year and a half now. Um, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I started college at UC Santa Cruz and I was taking a bunch of liberal arts classes and then I took my first oil painting class and that was it. <laughs> and finished at um, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I'm a huge museum nerd. I could spend all day every day in a museum. <laughs> I, I collect art books too. Usually um, I'll buy them secondhand. Uh, Cause you know, like the big ones can be super pricey, but um, I've got a little library of those going. Obviously I love art. <laughs> I don't usually think about art history when I'm painting. Um, I usually think about art history when I'm not painting, when I'm visiting museums, reading books, watching shows. When I'm in my creative flow, none of those things um, are on my mind. I found myself really stifled a lot of the time um, when I had to sort of filter or analyze or legitimize what I was doing um, based on a historical art movement or you know, another contemporary artist I, I should be emulating or something like even critique in school would be revolving around other people's art ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of talented artists do work that way and do um, find themselves inspired and pushed by other people's work. Um, but I just felt so stuck. Idell mm -hmm. Weber's work, her little silhouettes are at the, the credits for Mad Men. Some of her earlier stuff is photorealistic, super, super different. She paints a lot of trash. <laughs> they're street scenes, but they're more still life than landscape. Super crisp, detailed, just gorgeous, gorgeous paintings. I love hyperrealism, a sort of little homage to Idell Weber. I actually did a little painting of a bag of dog poo one time. Um, that was my favorite little hyper-realist adventure that I did. Now I tend to do still realism, but more expressive brush strokes, letting those show, you know, taking liberties with color. But I absolutely love hyper-realism. Mm -hmm. And when I was in school as well, it was like, it was kind of like a no-no to work in hyper-realism. On many occasions, I've heard people say, if you're gonna be painting from a photograph, or, you know, it's gonna look, the finished product is gonna look that real. Like, why not just take a photograph and be done with it? And that's never made any sense to me because it's such a different process. And in art, like, process is everything sometimes, mm. you know? There's a big difference between snapping a picture of something and then spending a lot of time editing or in the dark room and spending that many hours looking at the details of something and rendering that in paint. I feel like it doesn't get any better than that. The fact that just with pure attention and focus and care you know as a person is painting you can turn a piece of trash you almost like infuse it with some kind of something beyond its material nature um, just with your focus I feel like it almost becomes sacred something simple gains meaning just just based on that level of focus and attention and study. Travel on foot or on public transportation, most of the time walking. And when you're doing that, I feel like you get to be more observant than when you're driving a car. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's a different, I guess it's a different way of moving like a different level of awareness that you're lucky enough um, to get to use when you're moving about. But um, I don't usually go out looking for images. Um, 
it's just in my day-to-day -day comings and goings, something will strike me. Um, and sometimes it's just, you know, the color of a reflection that I'm seeing. Um, a lot of times it's a pigeon. <laughs> it will just kind of like knock me over the head a little bit and say, paint me. <laughs> zero effort it either happens or it doesn't happen i don't put any effort into like searching for a painting it comes and it finds me and i just have to be open-minded enough to receive it i guess be through my eyes less less of it being me as the exhibit but my own experience as the exhibit um, for people to experience that feeling of like a massive download of information and you know visual information emotional information like that moment when I feel most inspired by something that I'm looking at I do consider myself a very private person um, and so the notion of me myself being the exhibit um, is an unusual thought for me. Most eloquent when I'm not speaking. So the thing that I would most appreciate my audience being able to experience is what I'm looking at without me having to filter it. People ask me why I paint pigeons. Okay. And I have a lot to say on that because there's a lot of reasons. Um, but I guess one that I've never really been able to share with my audience before is um, a lot of the pigeons that I paint are actually self-portraits. Some of them come from photographs that I take um, when I'm out and about, and some of them are me as a pigeon. <laughs> to show people how beautiful they are. Um, they're so smart too. They're they're incredible navigators. They have so much personality. Um, and I think they're just beautiful. Like their foliage is beautiful and they're all really unique little creatures. They get a really bad reputation, really unappreciated. And ever since I was a little kid, like I've always thought they were so cool and um, like tried to run after them and, you know, make friends with them. and mm. social structure um, yeah I just think they're amazing and they choose to live in the city that's actually like a one-day dream of mine mm -hmm. just give them a nice warm place to stay and food absolutely everything has changed I um, have been working for United Airlines because I love traveling, absolutely love traveling. That's passion that's tied with art. Um, and I recently lost my job there and I've been able to spend not only more time creating, but more time in the mental space um, that lets me experience inspiration. I've been spending a lot more time sketching um, and that had sort of fallen by the wayside um, because that kind of feels like, you know, it's like a, almost like a warm up thing or when you've got a full schedule, it's like those smaller things sort of get nudged to the side. A person for the first time in a long time. It's a painting of Bruce Buffer, who's an announcer for the UFC. They were one of the first, whether that's a good thing or bad thing, um, to host a sporting event kind of post shutdown. It's a photo of him doing his thing with the microphone and he's got a mask on. He's just such a big personality. And I saw this photograph and it was one of those moments like, paint me. So and I had so much fun with it that I'm gonna start doing a, a little portrait series. Probably just being inside, honestly, uh, the stream of information that was kind of coming into my eyes was very yeah. different when I was no longer out and about as huh. much. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Find someone to spend time with. You know? <laughs> um, this is a huge gift. I have a very a small circle that I communicate with. So yeah, this is this is huge to be able to talk to an audience in this way. Yeah, I feel like I have a lot to share. Um, a corner of my apartment. So a friend of mine did this for me. Pandemic superhero airline worker. Got a couple works in progress up here. Wow. <laughs> and he's on a fence. Here's another uh, larger piece that I'm working on here. Yeah, beautiful. It'll be done pretty soon. It's also uh, way brighter than the colors I would normally use. That portrait that I mentioned. A couple of upcycled windows. I really like reusing materials and now I have to think, think twice before I, you know, pick something up off the ground. My pleasure.